Hey, how's it going? My name is Helmi and I'm from Balcony Hijau. So in this video, I'll be sharing my eight month update of investing in Wahid Invest and Stashway. But before we begin, uh, apparently in my last video where I deposited 1,000 ringgit each, I made an error that my portfolio that I invested in was, wasn't actually the riskiest portfolio, but it was actually the second riskiest. All right, so now we got that out of the way. Let's start with a summary. Sharia compliancy. So stash away is not officially Sharia compliant, whereas Wahid Invest, they're, they're marketing themselves as the Sharia compliant investing app. So it really depends if you really care about not investing in non-Sharia compliant uh, investment, then uh, Wahid Invest just makes a lot of sense now, doesn't it? It's a no brainer. Oh, early disclaimer. This is sharing my portfolio. I think everybody's portfolio will be different to some extent, so don't expect yours will be exactly the same as mine. I think timing matters a lot, and everybody's outcome will be unique. So what I did was I deposited 10,000 ringgit into each of Stashaway and Wired Invest in around July of 2020. And I set both of the portfolios to be not the most aggressive, but the second most aggressive portfolio. So that was July. And in around December of 2020, the, the results were quite polarizing for Stashaway. My portfolio was constantly hovering below 10,000 ringgit, which is the value that I deposited. It went down to an average about negative 100 ringgit. So it's kind of like a 1% loss consistently throughout those months. Whereas on Wahid Invest, I made a consistent profit of around four to 500 ringgit of that 10,000 ringgit that I deposited. A lot of people would disagree with how I count, but you can calculate however you want. But for me, I put in 10,000, I profit 500, that's a 5% to me. All right, now where do they spread my money? So for Stash Away, it's pretty much all over the world. Um, North America, Europe, everywhere pretty much except for Malaysia for some reason. Wahid Invest, on the other hand, puts your money into two big places, which is US halal stock market and also Malaysian stock market. So for me, I am kind of eight months in and the pros of using robo-advisors like significantly outweigh the cons. So I'm totally loving robo-advisors and I will invest more in the future. So after eight months of me using this, who do I think robo-advisors are for? If I have a friend who's just out of college, they want to know how to start investing, but they feel overwhelmed with all the financial lingo out there and they don't really care that much to do the research or whatever. I think Robo Advisor is a pretty good way to, to keep everything on autopilot because I feel like it's really designed for millennials or Gen Z's because we are the generation that want things really quick. We're the internet generation. We want everything on our phones. So this is what the Robo Advisor is giving us. It, it gives you access to your account on your phone where you can pretty much do everything. You can see how you're doing. You can see how much money you're making. You can see how much money you're losing. You can decide you can to put more money in if you want to, or you can decide to take money if you want to. And you can do all of that in the comfort of your own home. You can do it on your toilet as long as you have your phone and internet connection. So I think that's really cool. And it appeals to the millennial and Gen Z. Because if you think about it, in Malaysia, we have ASB or ASNB, which I think is the default for many. But one thing that bugs me a lot about it is that you can't withdraw money, at least a large amount, online. You have to go to the bank physically, and you can only do that during office hour. So meaning, if you're working, you got to take a day off. you got to take a day off just to go to the bank. Think about that. And once you're at the bank, you better come really early in the morning where there's not a lot of people. Then you got to fill in a form queue up and then talk to the guy at the back of the counter to withdraw your money. To me, it's ridiculous. You don't have to deal with none of that with the robo-advisors. Second, the thing is not everybody's interested in, let's say, researching the market, looking at financial reports. Like, I don't really care. I, I just want to live my life. I would rather do something else rather than reading some company's financial report, you know? I think for people like that who don't care or don't want to allocate that time to do the research, they don't, I don't enjoy it. So that's why I feel like the robo-advisor is, is good for people like me. You just put in the money, you set your risk, and then they'll figure it out automatically. 
then this robo-advisor makes a lot of sense. Now, so who do I think robo-advisors are not suitable for? I think it's really not suitable for people who really enjoy picking out their own investment. All right, so let's start with the results of my stash away. So I got my computer over here and I'm gonna show you some screenshots that I got. So here's the two points that I split the 10,000 ringgit deposit into two. And after there was a total amount of 10,000 ringgit in my portfolio, I didn't really do anything. I just left it there. I didn't add more money. I didn't withdraw any money. And as you can see, the value of my portfolio hovers below the 10,000 ringgit that I originally invested in. So I wasn't too happy to consistently see that my portfolio was profiting negative 100 ringgit-ish around, around there. So that's about 1% of my portfolio value. And sometime in late October, my portfolio dropped to its lowest point, which is 500 ringgit below 10,000. So that's a negative 5%. So after a couple of months of this, there were more times it was in negative than it was in positive for stash away. I decided at that point, maybe around December that, oh, you know what, maybe stash away isn't for me. So I decided to just withdraw all of that 10,000 ringgit and do something else with it. All right, so now let's take a look at Wahid Invest. It's the same thing. I deposited about 10,000 ringgit in July, same with Stash Away. And over the course of the next couple of months, the, the my portfolio value is steadily increasing ever so slightly above 10,000. So I'm making a profit. So at the end of November or December around there, my portfolio said that I have earned around 500 ringgit. So that works out to be about 5% of the original 10,000 that I put in. So I was quite happy with uh, Wahid Invest, I felt like it was predictable. It's not returning as much as I, I thought, 5%, but it's it's still pretty good compared to what I had to go through with Stash Away. And here's the breakdown of where Wahid Invest puts my money. Majority of it, about 45%, is in US halal stocks, and the other part is in Suku and Malaysian bonds. What is Suku? Let's Google it real quick. All right, Google tells me that Suku is basically an Islamic bond. So it's a bond that is Islamic, it's called Suku. Now, can I withdraw my earnings? And the answer to both is yes. The moment that I request the withdrawal on the app to the point that I actually receive the money in my bank account is probably between three to five business days. For example, in Stash Away, the moment my portfolio went back up above 10,000, I immediately withdraw. And I did manage to get all my money. So that was, yeah. Why Invest is the same deal. So right around February, early this year, I had a anniversary dinner to a nice fancy restaurant and I decided to withdraw a little bit of money from my earnings in Why Invest to offset that dinner. As I look at it, like it's kind of like a free dinner. So it's pretty good. Some of these profits that you just put in, you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to monitor anything, buy or sell or whatever. You just put it in. And after a couple of months, you, you make this much money that is enough to pay for your fancy anniversary dinner. That's a win in my book. So there you go. Overall, the pros of the robo-advisor outweighs the cons. And I feel like robo-advisors are really suitable for people like me. And for people who are new to investing, they don't know where to start. I think robo-advisors is a great place for you to start investing. So what will I do next? I think I will continue to put more money into Wahid Invest every month. And on the same part, ever since I talked to some of my friends who are also investing in both Wahid Invest and also Stash Away, where I said, hey, you know what? I'm not earning that much in Stash Away. I think Wahid Invest is doing a lot better job to me. And then when I told them that, and then they're like, oh, really? I'm like the other way around. My Wahid Invest is not doing so well, but my Stash Away is doing really well. So that caught me thinking, that this thing really depends on your timing or when you put the money in, in my opinion. So just because Stash Away didn't work for me at this time, doesn't mean that it's not gonna be working for you. So which brings me to my next move. So I don't think I've entirely given up 
on StashAway. I will plan to reopen another portfolio with StashAway, but I'll try again with a much smaller amount next time. So there you go. So if you're interested in uh, robo-advisors between StashAway or Wired Invest, if you don't know which one to choose, why don't you just did what I did? Sign up for both, split your money into two, and let it run its course for a couple of months and see which one is better for you. So both of the links to sign up for StashAway and Wired Invest is down there in the description. If you use my code over here to sign up for Wired Invest, you're gonna get 2.5 US dollar bonus credited into your account, which I think is pretty cool and for stash away if you use my link you will get up to 30,000 ringgit worth of your portfolio value managed for free for six months pretty good bonus for you all right so I hope my sharing has been beneficial and I'll see you in the next video goodbye mm -hmm.